back, everybody, to another edition of Pure Picks. Here for the best bets edition of UFC 296. Joined here by my man Gerard Top G. How are you doing, Gerard? Not bad, not bad. Just uh, grateful to see that there's people out there that really enjoy our content. And yeah, it's nice to see. Definitely not. It's always good to see those comments, likes, subs, anything that really you know helps out the channel in a way. I wanted to go over some plays for that you have for UFC 296. I know that this is an event where we're probably going to let the units fly and the night off with a bang and the year night, uh, year off with a bang. First pick that you have, I'm, that, let's just explain what it is. I mean, what do, you, what do you think this is and is it a what do you consider a Glock? So my first pick here, I was looking at this card and you could say you see multiple locks on this card, but um, this is going to be a, it's a lock, but it's going to be a sweat watching this. This is, this is a sweaty lock, and that is going to be Leon Edwards is my pick. And yeah, I like Leon Edwards' money line here. Awesome. And that Leon Edwards money line, it's uh, minus 155 right now. Could you explain to the peer pickers why you're on the Leon side in this main event? So when I look at both Covington and Edwards, I see that Leon is, I would say he's on his prime years, and I think that he's actually getting better. And you just see his size for this weight class. It's it's kind of different. And you look at Colby Covington, he's going to be pretty undersized here. But you, Colby Covington has the stamina, so we'll see how he goes. But he has been on a layoff for almost two years. And I like Edwards here because he's, when I think of Covington's game plan, he he's going to look to pressure. He's going to look to volume, to put on that volume on him. And probably try to be like a wet blanket and just control rounds. And I'm not sure if he can find a finish with the type of power that he has. We don't usually see that from Covington. He just tries to overwhelm. And and because of that, I think he knows that this is going to be probably his last shot at a title. And he's 35. And this is basic. All the marbles are are right here. He has to go all in, right? So what I see is Edwards. I think Edwards can counter uh, Covington. And I would I would imagine that Edwards has actually been honing in a way to stop those takedowns and counter those takedowns and pressure throughout all fight camp, knowing that he's facing Covington. And in my mind, I, I see Covington, he might get desperate at times, trying to force takedowns and winning these rounds and being a dog out there using that stamina. And if he forces it, he might get caught with a head kick or what I'm imagining is he, he'll have this pressure and eventually Edwards might catch him with a knee to the face and I can even I can even see an Edwards finish in this fight with how Covington might be desperate to win this and finally get that title. So this is in the US so it is kind of kind of antsy like <laughs> this could be a sweat watching this if it goes to a decision and then if the judges like the pressure and the US crowd but we'll see i like i like edwards here he's patient methodical he's smooth and he's in his prime years so yeah that's what i see in this fight yeah that's that's a good uh, breakdown i think that this fight i've been going back and forth on it I, i'm not sure if i at this moment I mean, I think yesterday when I did the breakdown with Alex, I wanted to for sure put him as a parlay piece. Today, I'm 
most likely going to hold off. I, I think I'm going to wait for the weigh-ins for this one. But I do see where you're seeing. I tend to agree with you. I think that Leon will win by decision. But there are a lot of factors that you mentioned about this being you know, the USA crowd, the U.S. champ. You know, this, this guy could. Mm-hmm. They favor this guy to bring back the championship to the United States. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, where your second leg or maybe the second uh, play that you had, I think you had a parlay. Could you explain to us what kind of play that is? So another pretty high confident play here. I'm doing a two leg parlay with Leon Edwards. And then that second piece would be Bryce Mitchell, another short notice pick on the best bets video. And yeah, I, I like I like Bryce here. He's gonna have that relentless elite grappling. And against a Josh Emmett who has that power, I I think that uh I think Mitchell will be able to read Josh Emmett here now now that Emmett might be fading and slowing down at his age and might not have the same speed. But yeah, on short notice, I just think Bryce Mitchell's style, he he's just going to always use that style. You don't necessarily need to tweak too much on a short notice fight when you're going to be facing a striker and that's not that's nothing new that Bryce Mitchell has seen. So, I feel like he's probably prepared year round and we've seen him that he can he can win ugly fights. And if it goes to the judges scorecards and it's close, I'm thinking that they might just give the nod to Bryce Mitchell here. And yeah, Josh Emmett, I think his striking, I think he can be predictable and Bryce Mitchell can see those big right hands or hooks and he'll, he could just duck and take down Emmett here and look for control time throughout the fight and look for submission attempts as well. Um, yeah, and I I think here I'm just fading the age and I think Bryce Mitchell might be coming to his own. And yeah, I'm not sure so sure if uh, M is prepared for the grappling on short notice to prepare for the type of relentless grappling that Bryce Mitchell can can show in this fight. Fantastic. And just for the peer pickers right now, that parlay, the two leg parlay that Gerard just mentioned, Leon Edwards minus 155 money line, Bryce Mitchell minus 231 money line. You parlay both of them as a two leg parlay, you get plus 136. So not too bad of odds there. It's pretty good actually for just a two legger. What kind of unit sizing would you recommend peer pickers to have on this potential parlay here? Uh, with this one, personally, I'm probably going to go one unit on the on the two-leg parlay. And then for now, around 1.5 units on the money line for Edwards. But as the week goes on, and depending how much more confident I get, I might add more to uh, Edwards down the line if I like what I see. Got it. Okay. That makes total sense. Let's move on to another play that you had. I believe that this was another potential bonus plays. We've been hitting those quite often, so I want to give the peer, peer, uh, peer picker some, some treats here. What, what do you got for us? All right, so... This this could also be kind of a sweat, so manage your <laughs> bankroll in this these bonus plays. But uh, do you want the good, bad, or the ugly? I want all three. That's you want good. all three? All right. <laughs> I'll do you one better. Give me the future, the baddie, and the nasty. Oh. So give me Ian Gary. Give me Patty Pimblett, and give me. Thug Nasty Bryce Mitchell as a three-leg parlay. Right now, that's a plus 142. Uh, Ian Gary, Patty Pimlet. Let's first start off with Ian Gary. Can you break down that a little bit for us on why this 
is a bonus leg on your parlay? Yeah, so obviously elephant in the room is his headspace after all the noise that's been going about on about his personal life. So some people would fade that and be wary of playing any Ian Gary on this card. But for me personally, if there's ever a best time to have this noise come out, it's when it's against an opponent who you are familiar with. And he's facing a guy who he's trained with in the past, uh, Vicente Luque. And I just think that that bodes well for Ian Gary here. And he's got the striking talent, the IQ, and he's familiar with the guy he's facing. And he's the younger guy and uh, Luke has been in some wars, so we'll see how how that fight goes. But I, I like Ian Gary here against a familiar foe. And right as you mentioned that I wanted to get to the next leg that you had, it was Patty the Batty Pimlet. Could you explain to Peer Pickers why this man is another leg on your bonus parlay? Here I like Patty and... It's it's mainly because uh, obviously uh, Tony Ferguson. I think he should be on his last few. I think he should <laughs> retire. <laughs> uh, we've seen he's been on a losing streak. Then again, that strength of schedule may be great and all, but I don't know, man. He's looking pretty bad and. He has the he has the stamina, he has the mental fortitude, but I just don't know if his body can take it anymore. And he's going up against a, a young up and coming fighter in Patty Pimblet, who's who's had all the time to prepare for this. And he's has he has a decent mix of uh, solid striking and grappling. And I think that Patty can get it done here against a. I think way past his prime, Tony Ferguson. But yeah, this could be a sweat because it's Tony Ferguson. He's he he should have the the upper hand in terms of mental toughness against Patty Pimblet, but we'll see. But I'm still pretty confident in Patty Pimblet here. I agree with you. I mean, I think this is one of my pure pick parlay locks right here is Patty Pimblet, so I'm happy to engage with him in a parlay coming up in the next few days. I think that you had another bonus play for us. So we get two for one special today. We get another bonus play. If you tell the peer pickers, what's your other bonus play? Um, I just wanted to add on uh, this last one. Um, I think it's no coincidence that the UFC put on uh, – Ian Gary, Patty Pimblett, and short notice Bryce Mitchell here on this card because all three of these guys are marketable fighters who could be the future of the UFC. So I just wanted to mention that, and that's also one of the angles that I was looking at when thinking about this. But that's as far right. as yeah. the – yeah, you can see. You go ahead. No, no, because I was just going to go to the bonus. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm just yeah. saying that's a real angle right there. Uh, USC always wants to do in with the kind of new and out with the old, right? So they do that mm -hmm. really well, cycle through some of these bets. But feel free to share your overplay. I think you had another one for our pure pickers here. Yeah, so my final overplay, bonus play here is uh, over one and a half. All props, it's a three leg over one and a half prop. So I have um, Wonder Boy versus Shafkat going the over one and a half. Tony Ferguson versus Patty over one and a half. And Gary versus Luke over one and a half. All in a three leg parlay there. Nice. And the odds for that right now, it's plus 247. 
decent odds right there for a three legger. Could you explain to us, I guess, each of the legs and why you think all these fights are going to go over that one and a half line? So for Wonder Boy and Shavkat, um, I think uh, Wonder Boy Thompson he he has that awkward stance and it could frustrate Shavkat early on. And if you look at uh, Wonder Boy's past fights, he's a he's pretty durable and disciplined throughout his his fights and. He, he doesn't take too much damage, and which is why he's able to fight at 40 years old. And he looks much better than uh, Tony Ferguson at this age. So I think in this fight, he'll be able to last longer in this fight and make it kind of tough for Shavkat. And there I say, he might even be able to do, do an upset which is why I'm kind of stayed away from <laughs> this one. But I like the over one and a half. So I like Wonder Boy there. Um, so as far as Tony Ferguson, obviously we know he, he's, he has insane stamina, insane mental toughness. And he, I think he could tough it out for over one and a half against Patty Pimblett, who I'm not so sure if Patty wants to get him out of there quickly but i think ferguson can can uh stay in there for longer and for gary versus luke i i just think that this because of how much they've trained together i think um this can very well push to a decision so i'm not so sure how much different each other can show each other because I'm pretty sure they have each other's game plan ready and it could be closer than expected and turn out to be a close decision fight. But I still think I like Ian Gary here. I think he can get a more decisive win than the chances of Luke getting a decisive win. So yeah, I like the over one and a half there. Solid. Yeah. I see a lot of one and a halves for, the round lines for UFC 296. So I'm really intrigued on how they landed on some of these. Do they think that the fight's going to go the distance? It's, it does seem like they think that some of these are going to probably finish within the three to five rounds that they have. So we'll see what happens there. Other than that, do you have any other plays? I know you just gave us two bonus plays. You gave us a nice parlay. And you gave us a money line lock, but do you have any other potential plays that you just thought of that you like to share for us peer pickers out here? Potential plays. I think I have I had one underdog play that I was thinking about, but it is women's MMA. And I was thinking of uh I think I like Ariane Lipsky over uh, Casey O'Neill as an underdog. But um, <laughs> I'm staying away from women's MMA. And the reason why I picked uh, Lipsky, though, is uh, I think Casey might be overrated. And it seems like Lipsky has been improving. So I think I would, I might ride that momentum and go with Lipsky. But yeah, it's women's MMA, so you never know. Definitely. Well, yeah, best of luck to everybody out here that wants to play some of these plays at UFC 296. I think it's going to be a great event no matter what, and it's going to be the last event for a while. So you want to let the units fly, get in there, do some damage. And, yeah, we'll see what happens. Best of luck to everybody. Gerard, we're going to sign off now, but other than that, just have a great day, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Really help out for the videos in the future and the content in the future. We'll see you guys soon, probably next year. Happy holidays.